Hey, everyone. We are live at Pace Studios in New York right now with Jim Brewer. Jim, dude, thank you for coming and doing this. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. Yeah. It's good to be here. Yeah. Yeah. So congratulations to you because Live in Portland is out. It exists. It's out in the world. I've uh, been listening to it quite a bit over the last couple of days. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I've been... It wasn't expected. I could tell you that. Like tell- some people... Well, uh, I could, most albums are you work on it for a really long time. And uh, and you and you go over the material and go over the material, and then you set a date and you record two to three shows. This was um, part of I'm I'm touring with Metallica, and uh, we had it was right before the third leg of their tour, the U.S. tour, and uh, one of the night the night before the Portland show, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, this was yeah, this was the night before the Portland show, but we got there. Some of the tour, the Metallica takes every other day off. Portland, we had th- uh, two days off, which is huge for the crew and us. Like, oh, it's two days off. It's yeah. like a five week vacation. <laughs> so there was someone on the tour that was really into want to feed the homeless, like literally go out there and feed homeless. So I said, yeah, I'm, I'm all in on that. And then she kind of said, Hey, would you, are you doing any shows in Portland? And I went, no, but I can, I can do a show. He goes, yeah, we, some of the staff would like to go and we can, why don't you just do a pop-up show? And I went, all right. So I booked it kind of last second. I was worried about selling tickets because it really didn't give a lot of time to buy tickets. And then we decided we'll do a little food drive for it. Right. So if you bring cans of food, I bring merch. You just take whatever you want. I'll leave the boxes there. You show you. You just take whatever you want. Take as much as you want. Whatever. You want. So that was the original intent. And, and when nights like that happened for me, I didn't do stand up for a while. I didn't. Now, when I say a while, probably a month. And so it was when I did the show. I kind of. Some things I was already talking about, uh, working on, and some things were completely off the cuff. Most of it was, there was a lot off the cuff right off the front. A lot of Metallica stuff. Yeah. That I still kind of go, wow, what did I say that? Oh, I forgot I said that. And, uh, and it's, but <laughs> Talked it's a, a surprising amount of shit about those guys, which was, I mean, hilarious, and I'm sure was taken in the spirit in which it was intended. But when I was hearing some of those bits this morning that I just got you for the first time, it was like, Jesus Christ, man, these guys must be uh, homies behind the scene to a certain extent. Oh, no. We're, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're, and, and I, I believe, well, here's the thing. I haven't listened to the album. It's I'm, good. You should. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Okay. So what happened was the show finished, and we're handing out, you know, the food stuff. How'd the food drive do? The great food drive. And I felt really good about the show. I said, ah, I tried some stuff that I, didn't, I wasn't sure if they'd be into. Some of it was kind of heavy. I'm talking about my dad dying in my arms. Yeah. And I kind of put out there how I felt his spirit became this cardinal that I was asking for to come. So... It was some weird stuff I didn't want to put out there, but I was like, yeah, who cares? It's a Tuesday night in Portland. And when it was over, I was touring. When I was touring, I had a guy that would film everything I did on tour. And he'd follow me around the whole Metallica tour. And that night he goes, hey, I just want to let you know I recorded tonight. I said, well, we record every comedy show. He goes, no, no, no. I professionally recorded the set. In case you want to use it, I, uh, okay. I I wasn't thinking album. I wasn't thinking anything like that. Yeah. I was thinking, oh, all right, this will sound nicer than my phone because I record on my phone and then I'll listen and I'll try to take notes and go, ah, oh, that I can elaborate on that routine and maybe cut that one out, cut the fat out of that. And then, like a month later, my manager went, "Have you listened to this?" Well, now. Because I think we have an album. I went, Portland? The Tuesday night Portland? He said, yeah, it's really, it's funny. There's some deep stuff. It's silly. It's really good. I went, Portland? He goes, yeah. I, I'm serious. I think we got, I, I've let a bunch of people listen to it and they love it. I went, Portland? Because, <laughs> yeah. So I, I said, oh, yeah, if you think this is a comedy album. And uh, he was so ecstatic about it that he created his own record company. And with comedy albums, this was the launch 
of his record company. And we shot, I think, to number four or five in the comedy album on Billboard, which I didn't see coming. Nice, dude. Congratulations. That's amazing for, for a thing that you were not aware was underway while it was actually happening. It's nice. Yeah, like, how- I don't... And, and then it was about two, two, three weeks before it came out, and I got all the press that I had it to, and I went, whoa, what, what is this for? This is the album. I said, we got to do all this press? Give me... Because I'm telling you, this is everyone that wants to do it. Went, what? And so... So here we are. Thanks, so for, here thanks we are. for doing this, man. This is great yeah, to it's meet kinda, you and hear, hear more about it's it. It's kind of cool because um, the best things that have happened to me are things just not planned and I'm not keeping my... It's not that... And I don't want to I don't want to sound like nonchalant and pompous. I'm just, I'm just being honest. Yeah, dude, you know, I when relate said, to that a million percent, man. We I fell laterally into this gig. Like, this was not planned at all. I mean, we've right. been doing this for eight years now. Right. I, I'm like the Forrest Gump of... Of entertainment. So if you told me when I'm staring at Metallica opening for Ozzy in 1986 at the Nassau Coliseum in Long Island that, oh, by the way, years down from now, you're going to be touring with them, but yeah, you're going to be creating a whole opening show. So what? Come on. I, I, it's just... Life is fascinating to me sometimes. Yeah. Dude, it's, that was, let's see, I've got, this was not planned, but I know, if I can find this in the next 10 seconds, I'll right. show it to you. Yeah, There's yeah. an Aussie tape right here. Oh, I felt like I, th- I saw s- an Aussie thing. Yeah, let's see. Well, I promise you, <laughs> it's there. It exists. That it is. I was standing right up and I've, I've, I couldn't tell if it was Aussie or, well, what do, what do you that- think you had? Um, it would have been Aussie eighties. That would have been one from one of the masters of the, um, the King Biscuit flower hour masters. Oh yeah. So Aussie from the eighties would have been roughly that period. Wow. And that, so what was Metallica would have been doing the master, master of puppets, puppets that yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. And nice. that was the hook into me. That was, I, I knew who they were. All my friends, my core friends were now listening. It's like, you gotta listen to this. But I had no clue. Like to me, to me, I felt like that was watching a major revolution happen. Yeah, man, I, I was I watching a whole new I country. I went to see uh, Rage Against the Machine and felt see. that way in 1999 during the, yes. uh, the Battle of Los Angeles tour. Yes. Saw that and had never been hyped up that way. Yeah. that I was when you know, fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. Comes on, that is a powerful moment. So Huge. I, yeah, so it can very much relate to what you what you did in 19, 1986. Yeah, yeah. Um, w- can you talk a little bit? Did you fall sort of laterally into or coincidentally into the gig touring with Metallica, or was that how did that come about? Well, I think there was a couple. I think there was a lot of steps that led to it. One, one is um, I'm going to have to go back almost 10, 12 years. The touring. Uh, I would assume it was Death, Death Magnetic. Magnetic, and they were playing New Jersey, and I had a radio show at the time. And I knew James Hetfield for a while. I knew Lars. Uh, and and I said, hey, can we get an interview? Because they were doing interviews on satellite radio. And and I said, I, I'm not going to do the typical interview. Just trust me, this is going to be fun. And we did more funny game show, make fun of you type of stuff. Yeah. And they were in there for an all I remember is about an hour into it. It was all on YouTube too. If you're like Jim Brewer interviewing him, the road manager knocks on the door, opens the door, goes, What are you doing? It's, it's, we got to go in the sound, we got to go in the tuning room. And they're like, Whoa, 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 five more minutes, 10 more minutes. It's like, No, you've been in here for 45 minutes. So like, come on, man, five more minutes, five minutes. They were in the middle of a game. And when left, the coolest compliment I had was the tour manager went, I've, known this band for years I've never been able to get all of them in a room for more than 10 minutes what the hell are you doing in here for 45 minutes to an hour that kept them in here and I, I was like I don't know we're just having fun <laughs> I think that was the beginning and then from there they asked me to host their 30 year anniversary in San Francisco and they had pretty much every musician that was attached to Metallica, that played with Metallica, that toured with Metallica ever through the years performing uh, during that week. It was 
mind-boggling for me. My, it was the Disney World of hard rock metal thrash. It was unbelievable. And so stuff like that, the MTV icon they asked me to do. And so when J James Hetfield reached out, they're in Europe touring the, the most recent album. And I got text. Hey, would you be into touring with us? Oh, they saw me at uh, Columbus, Ohio, the uh, Rock on the Range, which is no longer Rock on the Range. I don't know what they call it now. Yep. But I played the same day as Metallica, and I James uh, and a couple of the guys were there, and they were like, you know, you should tour us, man. Our crowd would eat you up, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, yeah, all right, what a, yeah, sure, that'd be great. And then almost a year later, hey, would you think about touring with us? We're not sure what it is yet, though. It's not stand-up comedy. We're just not sure what it is. And we went back and forth with ideas. Didn't hear from them again. I gave the ideas. He said, I kind of like that idea. I kind of like that. I'm not sure about that idea. And then I didn't hear from them. And then I got a phone call from one of the managers. They said, can we come to your house? Sure. Yeah. It's a Sunday. Do you mind if I stop by your house? Uh, sure. I believe this was in May of uh, a year ago. Comes to the house, opens up his laptop, and I have all these ideas I want to pitch him and what kind of opening I have for Metallica fans coming into the arena and all this stuff and what kind of show I want to present to them. And he goes, all right, well, we're doing 34 cities. And uh, we start in September. We do two-week breaks. I looked at your tour. We're going to have to move this day. But, but uh, are you into doing this? Oh, uh, yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he goes, don't worry about the money or what the show is. We'll figure it out. <laughs> and then he goes, if you're into it, great. We announce it tomorrow morning. What? And boom, the next morning, it was like Howard Stern. It was uh, Rolling Stone. It was just uh, Metallica blah, 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 with Jim Brewer. Yeah. Uh, hosting, emceeing the pre light em up show. And so for months, I was trying to figure out, like, what am I doing? What, it, what the hell am I doing? I'm not doing stand up. What did I bring it? And I met Lars and I sat with Lars. And even that I was like, I pretend, I told Lars, hey, you ever, um, you got a week in San Fran? He said, yeah, I'm here in June. I said, oh my God, amazing. So am I. So I fly out. The week he says he's home, I'm like, hey, I'm in town. Can we, are you around? He said, yeah. And I go to his house. He's like, what are you doing in town? I said, be honest with you, to meet you, to, to, to meet you and talk to you. Yeah. I said, what, what do you see for your opening? Because I, I'm, I don't know what, I, I don't know what you want. And he basically said, in Lars' voice, he said, dude, you know, Every time we have bands opening for us, nobody comes to see the bands. And he said, that really bummed him out. And it really bums the bands out. Nobody comes to see opening bands. He goes, so now what we'd rather do is a fan experience. And he paid the highest compliment. He goes, we've known you for 20-something years. You read an audience and you go with it. You don't have your set thing. He goes, I find that as a plus. He goes, I love that you're sporadic. He goes, bring a DJ. He goes, just you create it. He goes, but the most important thing is you don't have to be funny. Just tell stories. Tell stories of why we used to hang out. Tell stories of why you know James, how you vacation with James, you and your family and his family. Just whatever it is, I leave it up to you. I said, and then he goes, and by the way, most likely there won't be more than a thousand people in the arena when you start walking up. I went, wow. I didn't even think of that. He goes, so don't be bummed. I went, okay. And and that was and that was the beginning. And I was I wasn't But so that was that awesome to hear that expand like that the, that not uh not pointed sort of direction. It took all to, the pressure to give off. you whatever you wanted to do, or was were you hoping that he was gonna say something way more specific so that you could take some direction from what they wanted? I, I he said the perfect thing. Yeah. The perfect thing. They want to get people in the arena. Um, and then once they're in there, keep just keep them entertained until we come out. And I want you on stage 
as close as possible to bring us out. And he basically said, I want, we're, we're big fans of you. So Metallica going to say they're big fans of you. We want our fans to know who Jim Brewer is. It's a good day. It's a good day. <laughs> that doesn't suck. Dude, that's- And I was really flattered. I'm like, you know, I'm 51. I got girls. I get emotional. I get home. Like, oh my God. Oh my God. I mean, I, it's, it's mind boggling to me. It's mind boggling. When I said so this just occurred to me, the very first thing that I ever shot for this company, Lars Ulrich also plays a part in it. Cause I, I grew up in San Francisco and we were out there shooting. Remember the band Wolf Mother, that Australian band? Yeah, yeah. They're, Australian. So my my yeah, first yeah. gig was to shoot Wolf Mother at bottom of the head, bottom of the hill. <laughs> and and so I went outside, uh, take a break, get some air, and it was just me and Lars Ulrich standing out on 19th Street. It was like, dude, that when does this ever happen? It was like Hey, so I've got this camera. There's a camera crew inside. Would you maybe chat with us a little bit about about this band, you know, and make this video that we're making way cooler by way of your uh, by way of your either approval or just your thoughts, you know, talk to us about it. And he was the most accommodating dude with his time. He didn't know me anything at all, but he was like, "Yeah, man, absolutely." So we met him in the green room afterwards and chatted with the guys from the band and with Lars, and it ended up being a really cool video. You know, he he, I have to say. I think he's one of the most brilliant and and he's in tune with fans. I, I've seen him so many times go out of his way, well, unrehearsed, just go out of his way to know this fan, to go to, to to keep in contact with fans and to keep music alive. And you know, they, they had a little bit of I they I think he took a little bit of beating with the whole Napster thing. Sure. But now, years and years later, all the musicians got it now. They're like, oh my God, he was so right. It's like, yeah, we're, we're, we can't make any money now. And that's why there's meet and greets. And that's why so many bands, they're not set up for meet and greets. They don't want to meet people. And it's not, and nothing against the fans. But, you know, you meet some musicians, they're, they're, into, they're introverts. They don't want to talk. That's that's where they talk. They talk to their music. Sure. But now they're forced to go on tour. Not that, you know, it's a terrible thing. I like touring. But he, you know, people t at that time took it personally. Like, oh, you're rich now. How dare you not let people do it? It wasn't about that. It was more about no one listened to what they said. They said, you don't understand. This is our livelihood. If you're taking the livelihood away, then why are we... Then how do we how do we how is this a career then? Yeah. Yeah. I mean I followed read read everything that everybody else read, saw all the the interviews that everybody else saw. I just know from from my personal experience he was not never anything but like always above and beyond gracious, Always and is, even even awesome. just talked to him on tour. A couple of times I would talk to him on tour and he would call me in and he'd like, you know, how are the fans? Are they into it? I'm like, are you kidding me? This is I I've been watching you for 30 years and one of the best tours I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. You're playing stronger than I've ever seen you stronger. It's he's so in, he's they're so involved in what people think. And I always th I always thought they were way ahead of the game from everyone else. So a, a, a part when I was on this tour, the Foo Fighters came to one of the shows. Uh, Chris Shiflet is coming. Uh, oh, is he really? He's coming in. He's going to be here Monday or two, Tuesday. Yeah. Ah, off tell on him Monday, big he'll hello. Be here Tuesday. We will. I love Chris. Yeah. So Chris uh, Chris wasn't there that night. Uh, Taylor and um, Dave Grohl come to see Metallica. I forgot what city it was. And I said, hey, will you do this thing? I have a live camera and, and you know, it's backstage before they come up. This. And he goes, yeah, we do that too. We took, you know, we learned that from Metallica back in the 80s. That was the coolest thing in the world. They were so ahead. So here's even the Foo Fighters and Dave talking about the things they've learned and that they took. Not stole, but just took and influenced from Metallica. To me, sure. those guys have always been way ahead of the curve. Even now with touring, you know, bringing a, a comedian. Now, yes, I wasn't doing straight up stand up sets, but now all of a sudden I'm starting to see like, oh, this comic is going to go with them. Yeah, this more, comic more, gonna... more and more hype, hype manning. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Which show. at the end of the day, uh, I, I, you know, unfortunately for certain bands, it just uh, it does work. I got such great feedback for Torrent Metallica because I was, I want to make them 
proud. What I was I was wondering. So when you're like so in in 1986, in um, even further back in, in that era, were you who else were was really doing it for you? I mean, were you just like I was, uh, all I about was, the Big Four and all about no, that, no, no, no. that sort of music? No, or what were you? What were no, you no, no. Metallica to was of? the hardest I was listening to. Okay. Um, to me, Judas Priest was my first real. I've got a copy of Heavy Metal Parking Lot right there. Oh, yeah, Jude, that was me. <laughs> I was the Heavy Metal Parking Lot. I was the yeah. guy showing up at two, go walking to the payphone, going, "Why aren't you here yet? No, seven hours. You guys are stuck. What? Double D batteries in my in my big boombox, blasting the metal gods, uh, walking, barbecuing, drinking." I was the parking lot guy. Yeah, I was man. the meathead guy. I can see. I can tell. I, I can see it. Hands down. Me so too. Me, I was Priest, ACDC, Maiden, um, you know, Wasp, the beginning of Motley Crue, um, and then you know, it was Accept. These were the band. This is where I remember all the albums I was buying, uh, and then you know the hair bands came, and I kind of got annoyed. I liked some of it. It was kind of shoved in the. Good for you for recognizing that even at the time and not jumping onto that bandwagon. Yeah, you're like, that has not aged particularly uh, well. Oh, no. Is this, what are they doing? They're making them wear. Me- oh, no. What's going on? And even Motley Crue was tough for me because then they went. Just, you know, the makeup thing, I, I, I'm not good with the makeup. Yeah. I'd rather you just, just you know, I don't. Paul Stanley was here uh, last week, two weeks ago, maybe. Yeah. No, I mean the, the extreme. The, I mean the right, the quintessential makeup fellow, which is so far over the top that right. it some, somehow is okay again. It's, it's, I, uh, well, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't know either. <laughs> so that was my crew, and Metallica took it to a, a new level to me. And to this day, still, I would go Metallica, Judas Priest. I got. A, I got a really. I love Judas Priest. Love. They were my gateway. Yeah. Still, I'll see Halford too. He can't do it anymore. Right. He's still one of my all-time favorites. And just listening to a lot of uh, System of a Down. Yeah, re- you know what? Recently, I, this is cool. That, um, System of a Down was my last great hope. I loved System of a Down. I got a cool story, and I, I'm. I don't know if Lars remembers it, but I do. We're touring, I want to say 2004-ish, me and I have a band. I would, from 99 to 2006, I would tour with a band. And we would do ACDC doing a Hokey Bokey, Metallica doing Gilligan's Island. Uh, and we would do metal bands and, and then I would do stand-up and they would score my stuff. Um, we're in San Francisco. Lars comes, comes on our tour bus. And I said, I hope you don't mind. But uh, if you're going to hang with us, we hang in the back of the bus and we mosh pit all night to System of a Down. <laughs> I, and, I, and he goes, dude, I love System of a Down. He goes, do you have sugar? I went, we don't have that album. He's like, I got it on me. So he puts in sugar and we mosh. I got it on me. <laughs> yeah. He just, he just has it. Yeah, he had a Amazing. CD. Yeah. So we, we moshed. In the back of my turn, I'm throwing Lars, I mean, throwing Lars down. He's little. I'm way bigger than him. He'd get up and he'd sing right in my face, sugar, boop, boop. And I'd take him and I'd throw him down. And we, when we, when he was leaving the bus that night and we were all amped up, four or five in the morning, I said, he's got to go. He's got to go. It's time to go to bed. He goes, if there ever was a band, he goes, and I had a pass along the torch, I would give it to them. And at that time, that was huge, huge. Um, and then they didn't, I saw them. Yeah, we can keep our fingers crossed, but. Uh, oh man, they gave me help. The lyrics, what they were singing about, everything about them. Yeah. I loved System of Down. So I just started, I just started I listening see him again. At the, the Long Beach uh, Auditorium, Long Beach Arena, Long Beach LA long yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that was, I mean, I got that, that same thing. I was much older at that time than I was when I went to that rage show when I was, you know, 16 or whatever that was. But, uh, you know, 10, 15 years later as an older person got that exact same feeling at the, at the system concert. So definitely. And that's, feel that 100%. and that's, and that's another tip of the hat to bands like Metallica. Cause to me, they were, they brought, 
of revolution, system of a down, rage against the machine. He was in, dude, Tom was right here doing this like three months ago, maybe. That was a fun, that was a fun day. This is a fun day, man. I love this. I'm, this is- I'm not sure if they knew or cared. I'm going to say they cared, but I'm not sure if they knew how powerful the reaction was to what they were putting out there and what it was creating and what it was it's just creating a whole different culture, if that makes sense. And when they stopped, it was just, it was heartbreaking. Just, it's like watching a beautiful flag and all of a sudden just stops flagging and it just stops blowing the wind and it just hangs. So where I think about if system came back now, I'm excited to see them, but do they have that that drive? Yeah. If if Rage Against the Machine came back, like, yeah, it's, it's a little different now. Me saying fifty, going fuck you, I won't tell, I won't do it. I told you. Yeah. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah, it definitely does. Well, I mean, that's what that the the purpose, the main purpose of this room and what we do. I mean, nine ninety eight percent of this room is recording live stream sessions. So we bands come in here and play three songs. We do some interview stuff, but it's mostly just. I, mean, I think the the tagline of Pace Magazine is looking for uh, signs of life in popular culture. I mean, that's what we are here doing is seeing who is the right there at the forefront, giving me that same that same feeling. And it happens, you know, it happens on a weekly, monthly basis where a band. And you know, there's this Canadian band called the Dirty Nils came in here, and I was not familiar with them before before we started this whole advanced conversation. And then the Dirty Nil came in and played, and I got that same. I mean, these kids they're much younger than me. I don't know how old they are, but I was like, holy shit, man, we're really seeing something right now in this tiny little space, you know? And it's it's amazing. So I mean, I fully agreed. It's not going to be system or rage that's going to blow our minds next, but it's out there. I mean, it's there out there. So I'm waiting. Bands. I'm waiting for. To me, I think it's only a matter of time before some kids, it's got to be kids, that come out of left field and make the world start going, whoa, 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 who, who, are, these ki- who are these kids? You hear what they're singing about? You hear what they're doing? Wow, these kids. I'm, I'm waiting for that day. I think it's going to come Yeah. because uh, it's just it's part of society. It, it has to come. And when it comes, it's going to be a huge explosion. And I can't, I can't wait to see it. Yes. Can't wait There's to see it. There's the headline. It. When it comes, it's going to be a huge explosion, says Jim Brewer. There's the headline <laughs> for, the, for the video. We got it. Dude, we nailed it. Yeah. Man, thank you very, no, thank very you much so for coming much. through and doing yeah. this. And so uh, Live from Portland is out. It's out in the world it. right now. Um, there's tons of of uh, material about having toured with Metallica. There's tons of of more more sensitive stuff as well on it. But it's I mean it's it's great. I'm gonna keep listening to it. Hopefully everybody who's tuned in right now is also able to check it out. And uh, you've got you've got a number of stand up dates coming up as well. Right? I have some in July. In I'm in uh, Huntington tomorrow. tomorrow. I I do a some lot UK of shows. Dates, some Western Europe stuff. I got some Western Europe, and then um, look out for a. 30 city tour starting in the fall. Cool. And that's all going to be up at officialjimbrewer.com when it's announced. And uh, dude, thanks again for doing this. Thanks and, for having all me. All right. Thanks everybody for watching. Thank you.